Hello, this is Jennifer with Science Buddies, and in this video, we will be exploring how to weave your own wearable touch sensor. These are all the materials you will need for the project. You will need some yarn, conductive thread, a weaving loom kit, scissors, and some tape. Some of the electronic materials you will need include a micro USB cable, a tiny Lily mini USB adapter, a tiny Lily mini processor, a tiny Lily battery adapter, and a lithium polymer battery. If you need any clarifications on the materials, check out the link to our written directions on our website. For this project, you will also need access to a computer. Before we get started with weaving, make sure you have the Arduino IDE installed on your computer. If this is your first time using an Arduino, see the Science Buddies Getting Started with Arduino page, link in the description. First, I will introduce you to some weaving terminology. The warp thread is the vertical threads going through your loom and are held in tension by the loom. The weft thread is a horizontal thread that passes through the warp thread. Okay, now let's warp our loom. The warp yarn should be your non-conductive yarn of choice. Using a thinner yarn allows you to have a clean and easy weave. To set up your loom, you can use the directions that are provided by your kit. Each loom should have a set of instructions. If not, feel free to look through our playlist for the loom most like yours and skip ahead. If your loom design is like the one shown in this project, you can follow the following instructions. To set up the warp, first measure out and cut approximately 10 feet of thin yarn. Form a knot with the desired warp yarn to fit over the corner onto the first groove. Leave a 3 to 4 inch tail. Now, bring the warp down to the opposite slot. Now bring the warp yarn around the back of the next prong and up the adjacent groove and back to the top. Repeat this process across the loom, and once the warp yarn is through the final slot, you can bring it around to the back and connect it with a beginning tail to hold it in place. I plan to make a thinner patch than my current loom, so I am only warping around 2-3 inches of the loom. Feel free to warp the entire loom. For the weave, we'll be doing a plain weave, but you can definitely do more advanced weaving techniques. The plain weave is the basic up, down, over, under sequence. To start, cut about 6 feet of thick, non-conductive yarn. This is your weft yarn. The thicker your yarn is, the faster your weaving will be. Thread your weft yarn through the hole in the tapestry needle and weave. So here is the up and down sequence. Pull the yarn all the way through, but leave a 3 to 4 inch tail. Use your provided comb or fingers to push the yarn down after weaving a row. At the end of each row, add a little bit of slack to the yarn so it does not narrow inwards. Weave about an inch or two yarn. If six feet of yarn is not enough, cut more yarn and tie it to the end of the yarn. Cut the excess yarn, leaving about a two inch tail. At the end of weaving the rows of yarn, it is time to weave with conductive thread. Because conductive thread is much thinner, you will need a lot more. Cut about 10 feet of conductive thread and thread through your tapestry needle. To make weaving easier, wrap your thread around your tapestry needle and leave about 8 to 9 inches of conductive thread at the end. Begin the conductive thread section by tying the end of the conductive thread to the excess yarn from the previous section. Continue weaving. Weave about half an inch of rows of conductive thread. Leave about 8 to 9 inches of conductive thread. Tape down excess conductive thread to your loom. Start a new section. To start, once again, cut about 6 feet of yarn. Start by leaving a tail of 3 to 4 inches. Now tie the tail to the last warp. Weave 1 to 2 inches again. Repeat with conductive thread. Weave about half an inch. Make sure to end the conductive thread section so that the thread tail is facing the same directions as what you ended the previous conductive thread section. Tape it down. Now it is time for another yarn section. Once done, start your conductive thread section again. Finish the weave off with a final section of yarn. Finish your weave and remove it from the loom. Follow the following steps if you have a similar loom. If not, use the directions given with your loom to finish your weave. See the curated YouTube playlist for video instructions on removing your woven patch from your loom. You should have a 3-4 to four inch tail of thick yarn at the beginning of your patch and at the end of your patch. Working on one at a time, tie the excess yarn to your tapestry needle. Thread the excess yarn through at least 3-4 to four side loops on the outer edge of the woven patch. If you did not weave your patch to the edge of the loom like I have, cut the warp yarns. Double knot tie the warp yarns together so that the warp wraps around the final row of weft yarn. Make sure it is tightened. I don't show this here, 
but if you wove your patch to the edge of your loom, make sure to carefully remove the holding loops from the loom's teeth. Gently massage your weft yarn to fill the extra warp. Now it is time to test your sensor. Connect the excess conductive thread to the Tiny Lily mini processor. You can tie these threads to the Tiny Lily directly, or you can sew them onto an article of clothing. I'll be using a piece of felt as demonstration. You want to connect the conductive threads to pin A0, 2, and 3. Now let's launch the Arduino IDE. Connect your Tiny Lily mini processor board to the computer using the Tiny Lily mini USB adapter and micro USB cable. Once connected, go to the top bar, select Tools, then Board. In the drop down menu, select Arduino Pro or Pro Mini. Next, go to the Tools, then Processor. Select At Mega 328p, 3.3 volts, 8 megahertz. This option will not appear until you have selected Arduino Pro or Pro Mini for the board. Finally, it's time to select your port. This should be COM followed by a series of numbers and it will be different for you if you have a Mac. If you have a Mac, it would be this followed by a series of numbers. Download touchsensors.zip, extract the folder. Then open touchsensor INO in the Arduino IDE. Upload onto your tiny lily. Now open the serial monitor by selecting tools, serial monitor. A new window should pop up. Once your Arduino code has successfully uploaded onto your tiny lily, you should see different pins being represented as text. Look at the serial monitor when you are not touching woven conductive thread patches. All of these pins should have a value of one. Touch a woven conductive thread patch. Each patch is a different sensor. Only touch one part at a time. You should see that one of the pin's values change. Remove your hand from the sensor. The pin value should go back to one. Test all your patches. If the values do not change, or if the value is not one when you are not touching it, double check to make sure threads from different patches are not touching each other. It is time to add an LED. Disconnect the tiny lily from the computer. Make sure that you have sewn your tiny lily onto your felt at this point. You can also sew your sensor onto your clothing for extra security, if you would like. If your conductive thread is too short, you can connect extra conductive thread to your current conductive thread as long as the two threads are touching at one point. Now, sew an RGB LED to the same clothing piece. Make the following connections with conductive thread. Connect the positive pin, denoted as a plus sign, on the tiny lily to the positive pin on the LED board. Connect the negative pin, denoted as a minus sign, on the tiny lily to the negative pin on the LED board. Connect the zero pin on the tiny lily to the pin with the arrow pointing into the LED board. Here is a circuit diagram for clarification. Connect your tiny lily to the computer using the mini USB adapter and the USB cable. Download touchrgb.zip, extract the folder, then open touchrgb.ino in the Arduino IDE. You should also download and install the Fast LED library. To do so, navigate to the top bar and click Tools, Manage Libraries. From here, search for Fast LED. Install. Now, upload the code onto your Tiny Lily mini processor. Once your Arduino code has been successfully uploaded onto your Tiny Lily, you should see the LED light up in different colors corresponding to the different sensor patches. Each section of woven conductive thread is a different sensor patch. If not, double check your conductive thread's connection pins. Switch your USB adapter with your battery adapter and power the Tiny Lily with the LiPo battery. You are now done with your woven touch sensor. For more crafty DIY projects and thousands of other fun hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.